What's up guys, it's the Unhinged Engineer here. Since a couple of years ago, when I graduated with my bachelor's in aerospace engineering, there's been a lot of things I realized in hindsight, either about the degree itself or the actual transition process of going from an aerospace engineering student to an actual engineer. And so I really do think that some of these insights had I made them even earlier than I already did, I definitely could have integrated into how I strategized throughout the course of my degree to A, make the most of that degree, and B, land a killer job afterwards. Thankfully, despite not having perfect information, I've gotten to a place where I'm working in the aerospace engineering field, doing stuff I'm really passionate about, and since that's ultimately the result I think most of us are looking for, I thought I'd share some of the lessons learned along the way with you. But before I do that, like I said, I'm the Unhinged Engineer. I make professional development content for aerospace or other kinds of engineers like myself who are kind of starting off their career and trying to learn how to navigate things. And, and that's definitely what I'm trying to do. I'm also vlogging my grad school journey. I'm going to Georgia Tech at night studying computer science part-time while I continue to work full-time. So if that vlog or the channel in general interests you, I'd highly recommend you like, comment, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get right into five things I wish I knew before studying aerospace engineering. Let's start off with this first misconception. So when I started college, I actually came in as a mechanical engineer. And the reason was because I was afraid that aerospace was too specialized and that if I got this aerospace engineering degree, uh, I would be locked into like one industry. A little bit later, I got over that fear and realized this was what I really wanted to do. And so I switched to aerospace. But I do think it's, it's really important to dispel the notion that aerospace is a specialty degree. Now, it is definitely geared towards a single or like small amount of industries, whether it's the space industry, the defense industry, aviation, the nautical industry. It is geared towards a smaller amount of industries and other degrees like mechanical, which is probably the closest analog. But an aerospace education really encompasses all the fields relevant to that industry. So if you think about an aerospace vehicle from boat to satellite to drone to plane, it involves lots of different subsystems. And as an aerospace engineer who's being trained to be an expert in these kinds of vehicles, uh, you really need to have at least some base competency in all of these. You can bucket those into the different fields that other degrees ultimately specialize in. And so while I'm not saying that aerospace is like the most general degree out of all of the ones I have listed here, I definitely do think it's a common misconception that it's very, very specialized and there's only a small amount of jobs you can do if you get an aerospace engineering degree. I do think it's really, really important that you realize by the end of your aerospace engineering degree, unless you decide to specialize in something in one of these subfields that I have listed here, which I definitely would recommend trying to hone in on the stuff you really like. If you don't do that, you're, you're gonna be like a jack of all trades and a master of none. And I definitely know for me, looking for internships my freshman, sophomore, and even junior year, I kind of struggled a little bit because I continued to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. And when you're that young and that early in your career, you're not really in a position yet to take on leadership and ownership of entire projects. Nobody's gonna put you in charge of the engineering of a helicopter from top to bottom. So early on in your career, it does help to kind of identify the things you really like and then ultimately hone on them. It makes you a lot more employable. Aerospace engineers are learning lots of different things, but maybe not as deeply as any one of the degrees I have here. That kind of leads me to my next point, which is about the Dunning-Kruger effect. So you, you've probably heard of this before, but in case you haven't, it's talking about the journey of education, going from knowing nothing about something all the way to becoming a guru. And at first, when you first get competent, you're kind of at the peak of Mount Stupid. You don't know enough to know how little you know yet. And then at a certain point, you kind of crash and burn. You're like, oh my God, all these people I'm working with are so smart and I'm such an idiot. And then ultimately you kind of go through this process and become someone who actually knows what they're talking about. For all those subfields I listed on the last slide, aerospace engineers kind of get to this peak of Mount Stupid and never really go further into it because there's like six other things that they're expected to at least be competent in throughout the course of their education. And so you're kind of like stuck perceiving yourself as much more competent in all of these fields than you actually are when compared to other people who focus more specifically on those fields, right? And that's kind of where aerospace engineers can get this reputation for being a little bit egotistical, uh, myself definitely included. The joke is that, oh wow, you know, you're a rocket scientist, you're so smart. Obviously it's a bit of a joke. I don't think all aerospace engineers are egotistical. Hopefully I've gotten over it <laughs> as I've gotten a little bit older, but I do think that this breadth over depth can lead aerospace engineers to be very susceptible to you know, getting a little bit of an ego and thinking like, oh, like I understand all these aspects of it versus these puny little electrical or mechanical or whatever else other types of engineers only focus on one thing. That's definitely not true because at a certain point, 
you're gonna be working with these people and you're gonna realize the rabbit holes just keep going and going and going and going. And so I would never purport to know more about flight software than a deep computer science, you know, educated engineer or know more about avionics than electrical engineer or structures of a wing or propulsion or whatnot than a mechanical engineer. And so the first step towards actually interfacing with these other subspecialties effectively is realizing how much they know and you don't about each of the things that you got a brief overview of in your aerospace education. So just do this as soon as possible and save yourself the heartbreak. I think like, to be honest, I kind of realized this pretty early because I, I did actually have the opportunity to be a leader and a project manager, systems engineer and a few projects. And I immediately realized that it takes a bill, even though I might've been more competent in everything, being in that leadership kind of aerospace engineering position, I definitely was not uh, expertise enough to like execute on every aspect of the program. And so you really have to learn to interface with these other specialties in order to actually uh, get the job done. But there are some engineers who are still my age or older who, who actually like never realize that there are people who might know a little bit more than them about certain things and, and don't be that person. Nobody wants to work with that person. So if aerospace engineers kind of take this broad approach to the engineering of aerospace vehicles and learn a little bit about a lot of things, what is the one thing that I think an aerospace engineering degree teaches you better than anything else? What's the thing that aerospace engineers are best at and what's their main value add? For that, I wanna talk about first principles. First principles is a problem solving method where you take a complex system and you break it down into simple axioms, truths, or requirements, and ultimately build your way back up to that complex system that you need in order to get the performance you want. What am I trying to say here? Effectively, aerospace engineers are trained to think from first principles, very simple requirements or axioms or truths and build them into these complex systems like drones or swarms of drones or satellite networks. We are being trained to look at the vehicle as a whole system and understand how all the parts of that system interface, interact in order to get performance we want. And so what I would advise you do is really identify like common themes in your classes that span across disciplines and even industries as early as possible. And to help you with that, I'm gonna give like a few examples that I think really, really helped me. The first one is really obvious, like fundamental theorem of calculus, how position is related to velocity, which is related to acceleration. A little bit of a computer science concept, but I still think it's really important. Big O, relative rates of linear versus nonlinear functions in the aggregate and the limit can have dramatic effects on the performance of whatever system you're designing. From there, I, I just mentioned linearity and nonlinearity, very important for control systems and for simulating certain physical phenomena. A lot of times we assume that they're linear time invariant. Those are kind of some math ones that I think working in mostly software and autonomy have made a big deal to me, but there's also more physical ones. Conservation of mass, energy, momentum, very important to orbital mechanics or propulsion, ideal gas law, very important to thermodynamics, the big one. One, Newton's laws of motion and, and how we break down free body diagrams. You can perform complex reasoning with simple axioms. And again, this whole process we're talking about here is really what systems engineering is all about. A lot of times you'll see, for better or worse, aerospace engineers kind of get sucked into this systems engineering uh, or even project management position. I know I've been in that position before, even though I've kind of shifted away from it over the course of my career, but this is why more than any other major, as far as aerospace vehicles go, we're the ones with the most depth and overall context about how they work as a system. The earlier you recognize these first principles, the better. Everything else that you learn throughout the course of your degree, you can ultimately reconstruct from these first principles. I know like I would sit there and I would go in one class and that's all about orbital mechanics and another class that's about like aerodynamics and hypersonics and stuff like that. And you're learning all these complex equations and formulas and rules. If you lose the forest for the trees and you don't recognize that these are all just built up from the same foundational building blocks, a lot of times you're, you're not gonna perform as well and you're not gonna retain that information in a way that you can ultimately use in your job later. Really understanding first principles thinking and foundational systems engineering is absolutely huge for being an effective aerospace engineer. Speaking of what's most important for becoming an effective aerospace engineer, I wanna talk about GPA. Employers want a demonstrated ability to apply what you learned in the classroom in the real world. Obviously GPA is a reflection that you learn the stuff 
in the classroom better than most other students. But the amount of effort that I think goes into having a flawless 4.0 GPA run, at least for most of us mere mortals, often can detract from going through the experience and taking the initiative to apply this knowledge in the real world. And ultimately, I think that's to your detriment and to the detriment of your future job search. So I kind of want to illustrate this diminishing returns of perfection in your classes with my curve of performance. Just, just for me personally, if you can get a perfect 4.0 in your degree with minimal effort, then by all means go for it. But for me, perfection versus not perfection, closing that last hundredth of a GPA point, that's a ton of work. To be that flawless over the course of your four years in school, and I say this as somebody who's seen lots of people do it, it's a lot, a lot of additional work. And so in grand total here, all of this is summing up to almost twice as much work, specifically on the classroom, versus what I would recommend, the classroom plus all the extracurricular opportunities that school has to offer. So whether it's internship or research or clubs, all the different things that I've talked about in different videos on this channel, that's like a lot of additional effort and additional energy that you could be diverting towards demonstrating that you can apply this knowledge in the real world. And to me, I really believe that employers would value that much, much more than the GPA itself. And so this isn't to dump on anybody who gets a flawless grade. I'm just trying to say that be realistic for yourself. I knew I could probably get a 3.5 at least, which is the highest thing that you'll see on a resume on an application form, get at least a 3.5 and then focus more on other types of practical experience. That was much more valuable to me as somebody who wanted to go right into industry versus you know, getting a 4.0 or even just like a 3.9. And that definitely landed me where I want to go. So now it's our senior year and we're trying to get jobs and we're looking at the different types of job positions and pay and stuff that all these people that we've been going through hell with the last four years are getting themselves. It's a natural inclination to compare where we're landing to where others are landing. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you don't compare yourself to others. It's only going to make you unhappy. Obviously we're trying to get paid. We're trying to be successful and it requires some intelligent benchmarking our performance against kind of the standard for the other people who are the closest representations of our own journeys that we really have. It's important to do that benchmarking. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you don't compare yourself to others. But when you do compare yourself to others, think about what industry are you in versus they're in. Where are you living? If you're living in the middle of nowhere, Alabama, and someone else is living in Los Angeles, California, they're probably gonna make more than you, but in, in actuality, they might actually be much closer uh, than you realize. I, I definitely have learned that kind of the hard way myself. From there, what kinds of organization are you working at? These are all very, very important things to keep in context when people just start blurting out numbers or you ask them and they volunteer trying to help you, they may not realize that there's lots of context that you just don't have and you're gonna interpret that number a different way than they might've intended. The most important thing I think that will ultimately determine over the long run how much money you're gonna make out of all of these is what did you specialize in within aerospace, right? So the first thing I talked about was aerospace is a really, really generalist degree. You learn a little bit about a lot of things. And so it's really important to pick the stuff that you like and, and you know don't totally close yourself off to all other opportunities. Any good program is gonna force you to at least have some breadth. And again, for the reasons we talked about in the first principles section, you're gonna be expected to have some breadth from most aerospace type jobs. But which one do you get that real subject matter expertise in? That's really important and that will affect how much money you make. I would argue probably as much, if not more so than anything else I have listed here. And so as you're going through and you're trying to identify what you like and what you don't, also think about what's pretty lucrative, what's a good skill to have that I'm getting the opportunity to learn by specializing potentially in one or a couple of things. The most obvious one that applied to myself the most is coding. Coders are making a shit ton of money. Everybody wants to know about AIML and coding in different languages that I wasn't originally exposed to. Maybe you don't like coding, but understanding certain tools like SolidWorks or ANSYS and using them not just for making cute little models, but actually doing like FEA or CFD or other types of simulation with those tools in a real world applicable way, very, very lucrative. And it's not only gonna help you make more money, it's also just gonna help you get in the door. And then I also have listed here systems engineering and project management. I don't think inherently these skills are very, very lucrative. I think the other two, 
you put that on your resume and you can reasonably expect it. you're getting access to a higher echelon of jobs and you're going to be able to make more money doing those jobs. But I think these skills are useful for making more money insofar as they help you get access to leadership or management opportunities later down the line. Identify these skills throughout your aerospace education, put them in your toolbox, it'll help you make more money later. And ultimately, as you're going through the process of hunting for a job and salary negotiation and stuff like that, when you're talking to other people, some of whom you may trust, others of whom you may not, don't compare yourself to others without context. All that context is really important. So to conclude here, to wrap, what are the five things I really wish I knew going into my aerospace engineering degree that I definitely think helped me going out of it? The biggest one that inspired me to make this video, aerospace is a generalist degree. You're gonna get exposed to lots of different things. Some of them you're gonna like, others you're not. And don't be afraid within that generalist degree to focus on specific parts you like if you're so inclined. If you're not so inclined, that's okay. Just recognize that towards the beginning of your career, there's kind of this trade-off between, well, this person's not senior enough yet to actually lead things, but they're not specialized enough yet to actually have the kind of qualifications we want for a very specific job. That was definitely a struggle for me. Ultimately, I broke through it, subject for another video. But overall, just dispel the notion that aerospace is this super specialized degree and you're gonna be able to do one thing and one thing only if you study it as compared to something else like mechanical or electrical or computer science or whatnot. From there, realize that the Dunning-Kruger effect is real. Be self-aware, recognize like, look, like I may, I may be performing really well in courses. I'm getting competency in several technical fields, but don't mistake in that for I'm good enough to do all these jobs versus other people only good enough to do one or two of them. Understand that competency and deep technical knowledge are very different. And when you find those people with deep technical knowledge, be sure to leverage them as much as you can armed with the broader context of these aerospace vehicles that we thankfully have. Speaking of that broader context, relating all of these complicated systems to one another in order to ultimately achieve the performance we want, this is all a matter of first principles. So I listed some examples of first principles. They're just ones that came to mind for me. So think about these very core first principles and use them to be effective in all the fields that you're competent in not just the one or two that you choose to specialize in. If you really wanna be an aerospace engineer, work on the vehicle as a whole and have that broad context, that broad real world integration, application, systems engineering, whatever you wanna call it, have that kind of skill set. don't ever fixate on GPA. Because at the end of the day, all the GPA is forcing you to do is just get really, really hyper fixated on one or two or four or however many classes you're taking at a time that many things at a time without focusing on the broader picture. What gives you that broader picture, at least in my experience, is real world application. So make sure that you get that real world experience and don't sacrifice it uh, just for GPA. Again, if you just wanna get a doctorate in some very specific field of like interplanetary orbital transfers or something like that, or something with hypersonics, then go nuts and go get your 4.0, that's just not me. Pay will vary, very, very dramatically between different aerospace engineers based on a lot of different factors. The main one in my experience being the specialty you choose within aerospace engineering. So I do reasonably think when you Google average mechanical engineering salary, it can be a much, much more reliable estimate of what you can expect versus aerospace engineering. It will vary all over the place. Like I knew people who were making 60K out of college. I know people who were making 200K out of college. I can make a long video about how to make the most money possible as an aerospace engineer, but that's not the subject of this one. All of this is just to say, when you compare yourself to others and try to get your fair market value and maximize that fair market value, make sure you're doing that process with context. That's at least some of the things I wish I knew in my aerospace engineering degree, because there's so many things you don't recognize until you've ultimately gone through the process and have that hindsight. So I'm sure when I finish my master's degree, I'll have a similar type of video. That's a wrap on this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was valuable for you. Like I said in the beginning, I'm the unhinged engineer. I make professional development content for people either studying aerospace engineering like me or studying other fields of engineering. The vast majority of my videos up to now have been pretty general, but aerospace is my first love. And so I wanted to make sure I, I crank out a few aerospace coded videos over the next couple months. So that's what I'm doing right now. If that's some content you're interested in or you're interested in my grad school vlog, I highly, highly recommend you like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped and I will see you next time.